If I was an actor and I needed to show a lot of emotion, I would pop in the soundtrack of To Kill a Mockingbird, Elmer Bernstein's masterpiece. And tonight, in celebration of the 50th anniversary, I had a chance to go to the theaters and see To Kill a Mockingbird. Yes, I own it on DVD, but nothing can take the place of going to see a movie on the big screen. When I was in college, at the age of 18, I took a film course, like a film-loving or film history class. Every week, we got to see a different film from a different decade. When we got to the 60s, my film teacher showed us To Kill a Mockingbird, and it was the first time I had ever seen that film. I don't remember hearing about this story much growing up. I don't know if it was literature that we had to read, like maybe some kids in school have to read it now. We might have, but it, school, was, school was a big huge blur. So it wasn't until I was out of school and in college and was taking stuff that I really enjoyed that I had the chance to see this fabulous, fabulous movie. This movie is now 50 years old. To me, it's timeless. It's a story that will go on and on and on even after we're all dead. This is a beautiful story which, which was originally a book written by Harper Lee, who never really went on to write another single book. That is so fascinating to me. But I guess when you write one of the greatest stories ever told, you really have no need to do any more. Now, some might say she has a lot more in her, and others might say she's written the best book. I can't argue with either one, you know, it's it's really up to the author. And this is this is a it's, this is just a beautiful story with such richful characters, including Atticus Fitch, played by Gregory Preck, who won an Oscar. This actually won a bunch of Oscars. It won, it was nominated for a bunch of Oscars, but it actually won for Best Adapted Screenplay, Gregory Peck, and Best Art Direction. And I really wish it would have won the Best Picture, but sometimes the Best Pictures don't ever win Best Picture. This is one of my favorite films of all time. This is a movie that I care about. This is a movie that I think about long after I've seen it. And that's what the great movies are. That's what the great stories and the great books that once you're done reading them you can go right back and read them over and over again and you'll get so much more out of it. I got so much more out of this watching this a long time <laughs> a long time later since the first time I saw it and you, you, you miss little things. I don't know if I understood a lot of the stuff that I was watching when I saw this the very first time. Now I've seen this over and over and over again and it's a movie that never gets sold because once I hear that score from Elmer Bernstein I am hooked. I just totally lose it. I wish I could play it right here, and you can watch tears going down my face, but that, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I don't own the rights to the music, but luckily on YouTube, someone's got it somewhere. And if you, have, if you have the soundtrack and have the movie, I highly recommend you watch it again. It was so great to see it on the very big screen. And this was a TCM event, so we got a chance to see some behind-the-scenes stuff. I got to learn that this movie wasn't shot in the South, so they built a huge set right on the back lot of Universal Studios. Next time I go to Universal Studios, I want to find out where they actually shot the film. I would love to step out of that tram, that's that silly tram, and get on the set. The characters are so beautiful and memorable from Gregory Peck's beautiful performance. He actually got the AFI's number one hero, but his kids, Jim and Scout, especially Scout, was also nominated for an Oscar. Mary Badham. What an amazing performance you gave when you were, I don't know how old you were at that time, but you were one of the best kid performances I've ever seen. And, and one of the, uh, Scout is just a, such a great character. And I love the narration from older Scout, because we're actually learning about this as she's retelling her story as a child and all these events that happened to her as she's going through these life lessons and learning about all these things. It's just so amazing, because, you know, they're, one minute they're scared of such small, you know, less trivial things like the neighbor. The neighbor. Oh, this neighbor, he's infamous, he's evil, he hurts people. But when they learn more about the big picture, when there's this trial, and it's so sad, this trial always makes me so sad. This man had no chance. This man had no chance for freedom. But, but Atticus did all that he could to, you know, he's a true hero. What a great character to have as the number one hero in movie history. 
I just love all the lessons that these kids learn. That who cares about the neighbor? He's not that scary. It's the real world that can be frightening and scary. It's the justice system, especially from that day, and the way people were prejudiced and hurtful against just because they had a different skin color. It's just so fascinating to me, and it's also fascinating at the time when this movie came out in the 1960s, a lot of crazy stuff was going on against the uh, black people. And this movie came out at, at, at a really crazy time that I'm surprised that this movie actually ever got made, this book ever got released. I'm so grateful for it. This movie is one of my favorite films of all time. It's one of the best films ever made. It didn't win Best Picture, but in my opinion, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that it didn't win Best Picture because awards are just awards. They're nice and fancy. They look really great. I love the Oscars. Don't get me wrong. But in the end, it's the movie that lasts, not the stupid awards. I love this film. I'm grateful for the chance to get to see it. If you have not seen To Kill a Mockingbird from 1962, this beautiful, beautiful film, I highly recommend you find a way at all possible to see To Kill a Mockingbird. It's a film that I will cherish the rest of my life. And if someone asks me today, Chad, what is your favorite movie at the moment? I'm going to say To Kill a Mockingbird. That, my favorite movie always changes, but right now, since I've seen this film, this is one of my favorite movies of all time. I'm Movie Man Chad. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook. And please go to WeLiveFilm.com and subscribe right here on YouTube to we Live Film, And also go to WhoYouTube.com. Thanks for watching.